Welcome to episode 12 of our Maritime Video Blogs. I'm Corey Ransom with International Maritime Security Associates. This week is part two in our series of the top 10 security and risk management items to consider when selecting a marina. We are continuing in part two of our series on our top 10 items to consider with risk management and security when you're selecting a marina. The first item that we want to consider, which is our item number six, is the location of the facility. And what we mean by location of the facility is what does the surrounding neighborhood or area consist of where the facility is located? Most of the facilities that usually have better security are located outside of, uh, of a regular neighborhood, usually in an area that's more commercial uh, or an area where there's hotels and resorts. Typically, those marinas have better security than marinas that are secluded or part of a neighborhood. The next item, or item number seven, we want to consider how is the facility maintained? I'm a person of detail, so I look at all the different details when I look at a facility and consider the security and risk management side. Is the yard mode? Are the bushes clipped? Does the fence need repair or is it in good condition? Do all the lights work? Do the little details get taken care of in the facility? Because sometimes if the little details like that are not taken care of, then overall the facility may not be to the standard it needs to be for your vessel. The eighth item to consider is the occupancy rates. You wanna take a look at the facility's occupancy rates in and out of season. If the occupancy rates are fairly consistent or if the facility is typically sold out or their occupancy rates are above what surrounding facilities are, that would be another good indicator that this is a good solid facility. Item number nine is insurance. This is an extremely important piece to have a very good understanding of the facility's insurance policy. Most facilities typically should have at least two different types of uh, insurance. One type of insurance to cover the facility if there's any damage to the facility, but another policy that would cover any damage to any of the vessels in the facility. And it's important to also look at what if any caps within those policies. If you're on a $20 million vessel, but the facility only has a five or $10 million cap, that could be a bad thing if for some reason your vessel is destroyed at the facility. So you really wanna have a good understanding of the facility insurance, but also the insurance that would cover your vessel for any damages and the caps on those, on those insurance policies. The last item to consider would be the waterside access control. Most facilities around the world have a fairly open waterside access control. In some areas, this could be a problem, and this could be a very easy entry point for people coming into the facility to actually do harm. So you wanna have a really good understanding of their waterside access and what they do to try and control that. Thank you for joining Justin the Intern and I on today's episode. We have a really large database of information on different regions of the world, different facilities. So if there's something we can do or you have questions about a specific facility, don't hesitate to reach out to us. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or any of our previous episodes, make sure you post those in the section below. We invite you to follow us on all of our social media. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified when we put out new videos. And if you like it, make sure you hit the like button. We're happy to steer you in the right direction. Make sure you check out last week's episode here in this box somewhere. And make sure you check out our Life and Events page where we post things occasionally about just things going on in life.